Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. I wanted to do a quick trip around the world. Uh, last month on August 1st, I did a, a video with the analysis of global stock markets looking at various ETFs uh, that track different countries um, around the world. This is a list. I've, I've since added SPY to it. Uh, it would be really incomplete not to not in, to include the U.S. markets, but since I do so much coverage on the U.S. markets, I didn't include that in the last video. But here it is. So that gives you a total of 21 ETFs. Most of these are what I call the EWs. Uh, those are the iShares, MSCI, different various country index ETF funds. So We'll go through the charts uh, quickly. Now, there's a couple points uh, I want to get to um, before I get into the charts. And then the reason I'm going to go over all the charts is to, uh, a couple, twofold, at least. Number one, uh, there's different traders around the world that follow the site or members of the site. So they're, you know, they might find some usefulness in this analysis. Now, these are also, I'm just going over the ETFs that are traded on the U.S. exchanges. Therefore, anybody in the U.S., or even outside the U.S. can trade these ETFs. Um, uh, their trade ideas, uh, pretty specific entry points on a lot of these, and uh, price targets will be mentioned along the way as well. So these are trade ideas, it's analysis. And then to tie it all in together, uh, the common theme that I'm seeing here, it really uh, sort of dovetails with an article that I read in the journal about a week or two ago. And what that article discussed, it, it, it was titled, Go Global Economies Grow in Sync. And it said, uh, this is the headline, low interest rates help spur a rare expansion in all 45 countries tracked by the OECD. And they said for the first time in a decade uh, that the world's major economies are growing in sync and we went on blah, blah, blah. Most of the article, if not the entire article, is all bullish. Um, you can look at anything with the glass, you know, as a glass half empty or glass half full. So half full, read that article if you're, uh, you know, subscriber to the journal. It was uh, back on August 23rd. Um, the glass half empty to that would be twofold. Well, first of all, the last time that the, all, all 45 countries tracked uh, by the OECD uh, were growing was back in 2007. And for those who've been around for a while, you know 2007 was the end of the bull market and the beginning of the, uh, they called it the Great Recession, uh, one of the worst bear markets in history, the financial markets. So we had a, a top back in October 2007. Uh, you know, as I like to say, you know, there's an old saying in Wall Street that it's always darkest before the dawn. If you guys remember how things were back in March of 2009 when it looked like the world was coming to an end, that's when the markets bottomed. Uh, the inverse to that that I always say, it's always brightest before dusk. Um, you know, that's that's uh, a way you have to look at it. Just, you know, at the market highs, everything is going to look good. Now, who knows? Who knows where we're going, if this is a market top we're looking at coming up soon or just a correction. But I'm going to make a case pretty in my opinion, solid technical case that all of these charts, nearly all of these charts are in alignment. And, uh, you know, another point to that article is, and I've, I've read about this before, when you have all the major developed countries on track uh, and doing well and growing and, and, and their charts are sort of mirroring each other, you know, all bullish, um, that leaves little room for error. Normally, you don't see all the countries growing in sync like that around the world. And when you do, if there's troubles in one, there's nowhere else to pick up the slack. In other words, if one goes down, money's coming out, they all correct. So there's not anybody right now, in other words, Germany or the UK or Australia or Canada, they're not beat down 10%, 15 20% off their highs. Um, so therefore, you're not going to see the money flows out of there. There's really nowhere to hide. All these companies, or all these countries, I should say, are up now. So that's that. Let's dive into the charts and I'll let you guys you know, make your own decision as to where things are going. This is a just, to me, a very clear and simple chart of the S&P 500 via the SPY. This is a bearish rising wedge pattern. Uh, you can see clear negative divergence. Yes, the same divergences I've been talking about for almost a year now. They continue to build. Each little divergent high has played out for a little correction, but this is just one longer extension of a more powerful divergent high. These divergences aren't anywhere even remotely close to being taken out. They're very much intact. And as I said, they've only continued to build um, for, you know, for uh, close to a year now, at least, uh, you know, a little bit better than half a year. So you can see the negative divergences. That's the nature of a bearish rising wedge, confirming the bearish nature. Each of these lines here are uh, support levels and potential price targets. And I could easily see uh, a move down here to about the 219, 
looks about the 21950 area, and that's about a 10, 10 and a half percent drop in the U.S. markets. Uh, normally, forget about how everyone else is doing. You guys know that typically the U.S. leads in your global financial markets. If we take a big dive, it's it's pretty unusual to see any of the other developed markets doing well. It is possible, but uh, for the most part, if we correct 10 percent, uh, it's highly unlikely we're going to see the other markets at least the developed countries doing well. So now we'll go through these in order of descending market capitalization. Uh, so there's the SPY. We'll get to Japan. And I do want to cover even some of these smaller countries down here because I think there's some, some decent trading ops. And again, these are all ETFs that trade on the U.S. exchanges. So no matter where you are, at least if you're here in the U.S., you can trade these without a problem through your broker. All right, let's go on to the next chart. EWJ. Uh, this is Japan. You can see negative divergence right here at the high. There's the divergence. Price is making a higher high, negative divergence. There's a minor trend line break. And now this one is in a pretty precarious technical position. Here's a trend line that I have. I have alternative trend lines. There's another alternative trend line here. I'll color that for you, which has just been taken out. Uh, so I like to give, if I can draw, make a case for two trend lines in close proximity, and I'm looking in this case for a bearish or a downside break, um, I give a uh, much higher weighting to the latter of the two to break. In other words, I'm not going to use a break of the first one as a, a sell signal, although it may prove to be. But if you have two lines, well, maybe we catch support here. Maybe a lot of eyes are watching this other trend line. And then there's a couple of uh, horizontal support levels there you can see. But either way, the divergence, the trend line break, everything else tells me that Japan has more downside to go. EWG, this is Germany. Uh, the trend line, you can draw different ones I had here that excluded this little brief breakdown, uh, snap back up. So there was a break there. Prices have been moving lower and really setting up with this minor trend line here. You could drag this trend line and put it, you know, draw it out this way. Either way, we're, we're below trend right now. And you can see that ended so far. Germany topped with a divergent high. Uh, we're dancing around this uh, zero line on the PPO, as I often use this as a trend indicator when the 9 EMA, the white line, the last of the two to cross, that gives you a bearish sell signal. Now we've been dancing on there, so you don't don't really read too much into a crossover right now if it's by a small amount. But when you get down here, you know, a clear move down below, it tells you the trend is bearish. And when the 9 EMA is above the zero line, the trend is bullish. So right now we're sort of in a holding pattern, but price comes first in my book and that, that support of that break level I'm sorry, a break of that support level, <laughs> it's been a long day, uh, will most likely be a catalyst and either take us down to this reaction high here or maybe the bottom of that big gap down here. And that's, you know, that's all the way down about another, whatever, 8% or so in Germany. EWY, South Korea. Uh, we all know South Korea has their own problems with North Korea and everything going on there as well. You know, that's going to affect the U.S. markets or has the potential to. Uh, you know, North Korea now, you know, claiming they have both a hydrogen bomb and inter ballistic uh, missile capabilities, intercontinental ballistic missile capabilities. So, we'll, we'll you know, it, it's just a mess over there. We'll see what happens with that. This market has become so complacent that, uh, you know, it's, it seems like now we'll take nothing short of a hydrogen bomb going, going off. But uh, my, my guess here, you know, is I, I did read recently that, you know, investors have finally given up on betting on black swan events. I think the next black swan event will just be the market simply collapsing on their own weight. Uh, all these divergences playing out, the breadth deterioration, all these, you know, trend lines that are just, we're lining up right now with a lot of these bearish rising wedges or trend line breaks on all of the developed countries. So uh, the charts are in alignment right now. And that's that's really the, the theme of this video. <clears throat> It's not just the U.S., it's the other markets are, are in a very precarious technical uh, position. So there's there's uh, South Korea, and I think once we take out this level with conviction, there was a little blip below. That's around six, we'll call it $66 to be safe. Um, <clears throat> I would say we come down here at the very least, fill this, backfill this gap, and probably come a little bit lower down to the, about the $63 level. So that would be a minimum downside target again. And I'm only looking at the daily charts here, which, by the way, I'm going to just jump back real quick. Sorry to kind of be all over the place here. This is a weekly chart of the S&P 500 or the SPY. And if we get that 10% drop that I was talking about earlier on the daily chart, we break this much larger wedge negative divergence on the on the uh, weekly time frame. This is a 10-year weekly chart. You can see the entire bull market here going back to the 2009 lows. Uh, so the potential there is for 
you know, a deeper correction. Um, there's that 10% drop would be around there, the top of those reaction highs. Maybe we come down here, make it about a 13% drop. That is a very significant support level and a potential target. So, you know, I said earlier about a 10, 10.5% drop. Take that down to about a 13, 10 to, 10 to 13% be my minimum pullback target for the S&P 500. And then if things get ugly, I think we come all the way back down here, back to about the 181 level or so, and that's about a 26% correction in the S&P 500. But again, first things first, so let's just focus on the daily chart now. Let's see if we get a breakdown, if breakdown sticks, and we'll see how the charts develop going forward. Uh, let's see, I think I covered Germany, South Korea I covered, EWZ, there's Brazil. Brazil looks okay. We had a triple top right here, and it just recently took out that triple top. Now there is some divergence. I don't have the lines drawn out here. I can throw those on there for you. But uh, you can see the negative divergence on that breakout. So that is certainly not a breakout that I'd be chasing. Um, in fact, I would keep an eye on this trend line. So if you are trading Brazil or interested in it, two things I'd be looking for right now. Uh, again, this is my preference. I wouldn't chase that breakout because of the divergences and the other factors I'm seeing here. Too many countries looking too bearish. Um, and I doubt Brazil is going to take off if, if most of the world's turning down. Possibly, but who knows. Uh, so number one, look for a break, uh, a move back below the breakout. It was about 40.65. That would take us back there. And this would have proved to be a false breakout. And fewer things are more bearish than a failed breakout. Then you also have nice uptrend line support. So you would have dual intersecting you know, support levels just below. And if both those give way, the latter of the two would be the trend line. We're coming back down here at about $36. That's that's a minimum target that I have. And I would I can tell you, I'll try to not grab that line. If I grab the line, it moves it. Well, we'll have to do that. A limitation with this software. That's about 11%, an 11% drop on uh, Brazil. So that's EWC. EWC, Canada. Uh, you can see divergence here. We had divergence at this high. We came back, hit support right here. This is a support line defined by quite a few reactions. Hit that support, bounced up again, failed again at the previous reaction high, maybe made a slightly higher high, which put in even steeper negative divergence. And so the bigger picture, you're watching this, or I'm watching this uptrend line right here. Um, not one of my favorites, but if things get ugly, I think EWC comes all the way back in here at about the 2475-ish level. And from where we're at now, that's a drop of about 11, a little better than 11%. EWT, Taiwan, there it is, rising wedge, negative divergence, uh, long-term potential target down here, about 3180. Uh, you're probably going to have more meat on the bone for, you know, shorting a country like Taiwan that's 15% uh, or so downside on that one, ultimately. EWU, this is the UK, United Kingdom ETF. Uh, there it is. I have parallel trend lines, but they always give a higher weighting to the the lower of the two and we've broken down recently came back up we back tested the the inside trend line um but have since we're right about on there so it's in a again it's in a precarious position right now precarious technical position that is uh that breaks you do have some support here so you know if you're a bull and we do get a pullback this is your first buying up right here you can buy there with a you know stop not too far far below i think that's decent support i don't have a very strong opinion on ewu um so i just wanted to share my thoughts um let's go on to the next one ewh hong kong bearish clean nice clean bearish rising wedge negative divergence uh so your sell signal comes on a break of that uh, trend line that trend line starts off the early 2017 lows or actually late late 2016 last trading day of the year it looks like and uh, minimum targets right here, about $23. And from where we're at today, that would be a drop of about 6% or so of hit. And again, that's the minimum target. EWA, Australia, not crazy about this chart, but we can see a divergent high right here. Actually, last video I did, I guess I had it forecasted to go up and pop above and make a divergent high. That's why I had that um, line drawn up there. And we did that. We punched up slightly took out the previous highs but then fell back below so, so far that breakout has failed but it hasn't failed with conviction yet we're just dancing around those previous highs i think uh australia's waiting to see where the rest of the world goes so uh, you could probably probably draw a little bit a little minor uptrend line right here there you go and that could trigger a sell signal and, and take us down here i think the target a nice swing target's about 2120 eww this is mexico nice rising wedge 
a breakdown. We back tested and have since started moving down impulsively so far. Uh, let's see, as of today, uh, we're right. We're challenging this previous reaction high. So if we go much lower than where we're at today, we're at 57, 55, 57. Uh, right now, much lower than that will take us below. There's a gap there and a previous reaction low. That's a pretty pretty important support level, in my opinion. But being that we've already broken down, back tested, and rolled over, I expect that level to go. Uh, and I think uh, Mexico is headed down here uh, to at least this this area, give or take 52.40. EWL Switzerland. Uh, it was a trend line here. We broke, back tested. It started to roll over. Nothing impulsive. And again, the U.S. markets have held up. That's why a lot of these other countries, even if they've broken down below their trend lines and the U.S. hasn't yet, they're waiting most likely to follow the lead of the U.S. Either way, you have a symmetrical triangle. So there it is. If you're bullish uh, and you think we're going higher or Switzerland is going higher, I should say, we'll look for a position long on a breakout. If you're bearish, position short on a breakdown. Minimum target down here, it's 30 228 and that would give us a drop of from current levels about five and a half percent ewp this is spain rising wedge confirmed with negative divergence breakdown pretty impulsive move we sort of traded sideways since then if you really zoom in and as of today we've broken down from that recent consolidation you can see the consolidation right there and now we've broken down with a pretty impulsive candle so there's a little support here big old gap to fill so let's just say uh, minimum i think uh, that reaction high there so that's 3082 down to about if we backfill the gap that line's 3062 so there's my price target called 3080 to 3060 somewhere in there uh ewi Italy, uh, we had a high level a rising wedge. This is a primary uptrend line. I think at the very least we come in to visit this trend line. So if you ask me how I think Italy will play out, see we have a minor uh, uptrend line right there. You can see a little bit of a, a small uptrend line. So the way I think this one will play out, uh, you get a sell signal on a break of that trend line there. So we come down, we'll hit this primary uptrend line right here. That, that hasn't been visited in a while. I think we need to test this trend line once more, maybe get a little bounce and then uh, uh, impulse a breakdown. That'll probably take us down here. My guess on this one would be somewhere around uh, looking for a backfill of this gap somewhere in there, maybe reaction right here along the way. You can see the lines, there's the levels on the chart. All right, next one up, EWS, Switz, uh, Singapore, I'm sorry. Uh, Singapore needs to break this trend line. If and when it does, you have the first support, pretty pretty decent support level there, about 24.16. If that level goes with conviction, uh, that would be your second sell signal. And, uh, you know, these are some minimum targets here. I haven't, haven't really marked up all these charts for targets, but you can see some potential targets there. EWQ, France. Uh, rising wedge breakdown and like a lot of other ones just kind of in a, everything's in a holding pattern since those countries that have already broken down their uptrend lines have been in a holding pattern since and uh, break of that level will probably bring us down to 2850 and then there's a big old gap to be backfilled uh, take us all the way down to about the 2650 2660 level uh, before all is said and done in France and that would be a, a pretty decent move down from where we're at now if that's filled that's about a better 10% drop EWM Malaysia I don't have much of an opinion on Malaysia it's Certainly not one of the more bearish looking charts, in my opinion, probably one of the more bullish. But again, I, I really no opinion. I'm somewhat neutral on that chart. I can if you're interested, as always, if you're a member of the site and you're interested in any of these individual ETFs, you want me to you know, give you a, a, a chart opinion on. I'll be more than glad to really study this chart a little more and give you an opinion. But there's a couple levels to watch. EWD, Sweden, uh, nice rising wedge breakdown the breakdown was impulsive we kicked back a little kickback rally to come close to back testing that wedge uh, maybe there's a little more upside left maybe not you can draw a minor trend line right there to watch for if that breaks we're probably coming back down here to this target 3319 and ultimately i think we come in back fill that gap uh, again i'm looking at the top the reaction that occurred before the bottom of the gap the bottom of the gap's a little bit lower so that call that a support or target zone right there uh, we'll call it 3190 down to about 3150. EWN, the Netherlands, this is a 
nice looking chart look you can see a very well defined uptrend line a lot of reactions along the way very clean just broke down today you can see the impulsive candlestick however we have horizontal support here about 3024 if and when that goes which i expect it will you're looking at a downside a drop of about 5.7 percent minimum to that first target around 2875 and ultimately i think we work our way down here that's 2721 that's about a 10.6 percent drop ewk belgium uh, looks similar. You can see a minor uptrend line here. We broke below and there was very impulsive selling after that breakdown. Uh, so with Belgium, I think we come in at the very least, we have to come back test or retest this trend line. It hasn't been visited for a little while, maybe get a little reaction there and ultimately move down here to about the 1913 area. Uh, one more to go. That's EWO. This is Austria. Uh, there's a minor uptrend line. Uh, divergent high you can see the divergence right here at the recent highs negative divergence and this one has quite a ways to go just to back test or to test this trend line it would take about a seven percent drop roughly depends when it gets there of course um, and that would be a minimum downside target and again like the rest of them if that trend line goes you have these big gaps back here um, that likely likely to be backfilled all right let's wrap it up there this has been randy finney with right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it